So welcome everyone to the wine dev room for the folks who are new. If, I think Eric made his pitch for the name tags. We're trying to push Plasdem to have name tags, so please come get one. Um, and what we're going to talk about in this next 30 minutes or so or 25 minutes is the wine test framework. We're gonna, there's a couple of areas there. And I'm going to try to briefly overview, give an overview of the wine test framework. And then these guys are going to make fun of me because I'm going to get it wrong. Um, that'll be entertaining for them, so that, that works. Um, and then I think Francois is going to go in more detail with the new test bot and some of the situations there. So, um, so very briefly, for those of you who don't know, Wine has a, a very rich and mature set of unit tests for Windows. So there's a very powerful set of, I don't know how many tests there are now, but it's thousands, right? It's, you know, so every, every Windows API has a test that goes with it. And in fact, we had had... Um, VMware uses the Wine test framework to verify that their Windows runs correctly. So it's how they prove that a Windows VM is running right is because the Wine test runs to completion. It's a very powerful set of tools and it's most commonly done by running just make test or that's how the developers do it. But there is also a Windows executable um, that is created that you can download and you can run and that executable runs equi essentially the equivalent of make test, and then it uploads its results to test.winehq. So I wanted to show test.winehq.org first. Um, oh. Yeah, and this is the point of today, you wine developers, <laughs> and anyone else who wants to help, is we're in atrocious shape right now. Our testing. Well, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, he didn't want to show this page, did he? <laughs> So it, it, last year, there was a lot of green on the board, and we were celebrating how much green there was. So this is showing, yeah, I mean, geez, we're at 10% failures. Um, why, why are we failing so badly? Do we have any idea? The one checks these pages, so I don't. There's no direct link to that one, so I will look for it. Yeah, but we all know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one developer here knows about this page. <laughs> the direct music is all green. <laughs> and that's all you know is your area. <laughs> so, and, and what's unfortunate is, is this is actually really, this is horrible, you guys. This is horrible, because we were on a path to all green, and now we've, like, backslid. What, okay. Probably Alexander is too nice and uh, still accepts patches that break the test, so. Yeah, I don't know. We need to, I, all right, we need to Probably get on. Yeah. Yeah, and we didn't have the, the make test lecture. All right, well, this is the make test lecture, okay? <laughs> so I want green next time we meet. So, and actually, in all seriousness, for any of you that have laptops, one of the things we are hoping to do, what we traditionally do at a wine conf, is we will look at the make test status, and then we will have a session, where that session is scheduled for four this afternoon, where we'll kind of look at some of the common tests and see if we can squeeze some of these out. So, and I see that technology has moved on, and it used to be at WineConf that everyone had a laptop, and that's no longer the case, which is interesting. Um, so get running make tests on your tablets and your phones, all right? <laughs> and then we'll be correcting that. So for any of you who are new to Wine, um, can we go to the, the it, you can do something very useful, and there's a simple executable you can download, and if you have Wine installed, a, a git build of Wine, um, you can download and run this executable and then it will automatically upload to the web page and it generates great statistics for us. Um, right, so you're showing some detail. Okay, so there's some green. Okay, so we can feel better about this page. Um, um, so the, the link to, to the wine test executable is uh, Okay, that's not all that <laughs> obvious. There was a better page. There's a better page. The bottom of the front page of test.wine yeah. Okay. So at the bottom of test.winehq.org, there's a link that, okay, is off your screen. Maybe Aha. We should put it at the top. Okay. Maybe we should put it at the top. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's another to do. Who's going to take that to do? You're going to do that, Andre? Okay. I need to know okay. what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just move this to the top. So this is a useful thing you can do. And then after you run it, your results will appear and you can see your results. And then you can even go in and see what area it is, and if you're a developer, you can run make test and you can submit patches and fix it, and that's a glorious thing to do. And um, 
So I think that was the bulk of what I wanted to say around the, the regular wine test framework. And then I think we have a lot of talking about the new wine test bot. Um, just and to frame that for people, we, in addition to running all of these tests on Linux, we now also run all of these tests on Windows. So we have a Windows QMU. We, we had a VMware system for years and years and years that was the test bot. And unfortunately, uh, the maintainer of that passed away, um, which was a tragic event. And so we've been shifting it to a QMU-based test system where we're running all these tests actually on Windows. And in theory, they should all be green on Windows. But then what's good about it is a patch can't get into Wine, a, a, a change to the test can't get into Wine unless it runs correctly on Windows, or so goes the theory. Um, and so the Wine test bot is actually a, win, a set of Windows VMs that run all of these tests on Windows. And unfortunately, we're having problems with the new Wine test bot. So the other thing we need to exhort people to do is to help us get those tests fixed and working. And that's where I turn it over to you. Did I miss anything? <laughs> so, so uh, maybe I'll start by saying that the, the white test bot actually integrates into this site. So, like for instance, when you look at the results on the on test that uh, you have. Uh, so here we still have the old test bot is still active. It's supposed to go away. Uh, like. In June last year. <laughs> Has anyone heard from them recently? Not that necessarily happen? bad that it's still here, but uh, it still works if it's fast. It just well, they were they're paying money to host it, and they were they were told to shut it down. So maybe I'll send them a further. I mean, if they want to keep it running, that's great. But I think I mean we can do it paid in from the pay them back from the one test one or something like that. The current cost you can that. So like it, it's really more of a. It's a courtesy thing. It's not. We should really. Uh, did you? You spoke with them, didn't you, Hans? With. Uh, and you spoke with them, so you have the communication out. Maybe. Maybe I should send an email. I, I think it's time to encourage them to turn it off. I know we all like it, but. Was Martin uh, maintaining the project? He he had been, but that shifted. Okay. So. And the problem is that uh, having two test pods is a bit confusing. Sometimes people uh, ask me, uh, okay, what's up uh, with the test bot? This VM doesn't work well. It's the whole test bot. I can't really do anything about it. I can only fix stuff on the new test bot. So, well. Um, and so on these pages, there's a um, few different types of results. So you have results from the old test bot. It's a WTB for wine test bot. Um, and you have also new TB, which is uh, for the new wine test bot. So if you have a failure in a new TB column, uh, so not too many apparently. Uh, so here, for instance, then it means you can uh, submit uh, jobs to the new test bot and to figure out what's wrong. So anything on on the new TB uh, machine, any failure on there? You can easily investigate. Uh, another set of uh, results is all the well, FG dash on the Windows exp Windows version. That's um, a test I run on my machine on in virtual in VMware virtual machines. So you just have to know that it's virtual machines. But now you should start to see more regularly um, FG dash on the machine type. So here's my EPC. Because I've set up a uh, number of scripts uh, so that now I can run white test every day on Linux and then it reboots automatically and runs the test on Windows also. So these are real hardware because I know that some of you want to uh, test on real hardware. So you got some. So it's, it's just an Intel graphics card, but <laughs> and if someone wants to do the kind the same kind of thing, I can provide my scripts and try to, well, I, I provide my scripts. They are kind of ugly <laughs> and the graphics are probably specific to my contribution, but uh, I can provide those scripts anyway. And the other thing which is interesting is, so the EPC is a real hardware, 
and you will find also on Linux, as I said, I run it on both Windows and Linux. So you can compare the two results. If it works on Windows and doesn't work on Linux, well, that's interesting. It's not because the graphics card is not capable of doing something about driver, Linux driver, or, or something in wine. Um, so I also run a number of uh, tests on, on Linux, like on my desktop, and that's another laptop that I've set up to, to do the tests now on both Linux and Windows 8.1. And that's also one where you'll see more results uh, regularly, more regularly. Uh, so. And there's also other tests that are being run by other people. So, and when things don't work, when you, you see a failure there, um, well, if you can figure it out, it's great. <laughs> if it's uh, so, if it's on the white test bot machine. Simplest is to go to the whitest button and, um, and submit jobs there. So the the new test bot it's new test bot the two hundred good auto. If you just type test bot, it's the old one. <laughs> um, so you have to know to go to this uh, new, to this to have the right uh, URL. Um, don't hesitate to create um, an account. I mean, I uh, think, uh, I'm not sure all white developers have uh, an account on the white test, but who's got uh, an account on... Uh, not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> so don't be shy. Um, you don't need to be in the top 10 of uh, the junior rank to get an account. <laughs> um, you need to register but it's mostly to weed out uh, spammers and people who want to do wine tasting rather than wine testing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, once you request the account, the account will be approved. It, takes, it might take a, a few hours or something like that and then you, you get your account and what you get is um, what you get is that you can submit patches directly on the website and so if you if your patch gets rejected, well, the wine test bot runs all the patches that are sent to wine patches. So if Marvin, that's the wine test bot, tells you that uh, there's failures, uh, you rather than spamming the mailing list with a number of patterns to fix the test, uh, you can uh, you can submit jobs on the the test part to figure it out and you can not just uh, do iterations of your test you can run anything you want pretty much you can upload an executable so you can really try to figure out what's going on with, uh, with, with that windows version and, and so uh, yeah so we have um, uh, the test bot, it's, it's got a number of uh, virtual machines. Uh, we try to have a um, number of uh, different Windows versions. Um, some Windows versions are hard to get because it's uh, server editions and it's really expensive for really no good result. <laughs> uh, so you could ask some more versions if you want to, but we may not be able to, to purchase them. But the, what you can do is if you is there's a feature you want in the white test bot, you can uh, you can uh, ask me or you can uh, even better you can make a bug report on the uh, one hq uh, bugs at one hq dot org. Or you just download it from here and fix it yourself. Or you can submit patches and uh, it's not too hard to set up. Um, so if you, if you can <laughs> I must have kept that or whatever. And so yeah, there's a special um, 
you have to enter the box in the right, uh, it's not one, it's uh, the test box, uh, product or uh, some product of it. Um, so that way it doesn't get lost. And so you can, it's quite possible to modify uh, the test um, VM configuration to, to, to configure stuff so that you can, um, so it's more useful for you. I mean, uh, like uh, I can add, uh, for instance, a wind pickup for to, to get a wind pickup test running. I, I added a MSXML for uh, DLS and some other DLS like that. If you want a uh, test to be run on the D drive and in the root of the, of the drive, that's possible too. Um, so let me know what you what you want. Um, well, that's mostly it. Uh, so, so the action items are shut down the old test bot, move the URLs, and then make it green. Yeah. Mostly the thing is, uh, uh, so there's uh, all those failures. I maintain, I try to, I maintain the one test bot, I try to improve add functionality to it, but I'm not going to fix the test. <laughs> There's way too many tests, I don't know the code, so I really need you, the web developers, to, to work on it. I cannot do it. <laughs> um, if, so if you cannot, if you, if you cannot figure out what, why the test fails by going on the white test bot and uh, running uh, executables or doing some more debug traces, stuff like that. You, you, you can also ask me um, ask me about what, how the VM is set up and maybe I can help. And maybe I, I cannot because I really don't know much about what, <laughs> what about the area that the test fed. And we don't really have the capability to do, I mean, it would, it's theoretically possible, but probably too complicated to do you know, regression analysis, to do bisects and do get and blame, right? I mean, to some extent, wouldn't the ideal be to do get blame and email people that they've broken things? But the idea is to test the patches before they are committed. Yeah. So then you, there's no need to bisect after that. Yeah. So that's clearly not the working. Yeah, and you, you, get, know, you get the source links, so right? Usually, pretty obvious which patch was the oh, okay. <coughs> and then I just made people. So, do you have a feature request? Can we get a Linux machine that, like Debian, that Alexander set up and it's like patches his machine? So, we have <laughs> one so with the maintainer mode, so great. people would just get rejected if, if, if the the patch would compile or the test would run on Linux or in that box because that would be if it matches his machine it would be easier to reject stuff. I think so it should yeah. not match his machine. I think what? it should be I don't think it should match his machine. That way we'll have two different configurations on the, the well, test. You have to the buy one pass on both you want to be authoritative, so. No the thing is you want to test patches sent to one patches. Yes. Before they go in. Yeah. So that's one of the many, many things that uh, I, that now that need to be done for the, the test mode. How about foreign language support on the Windows? Yeah. Yes, uh, for foreign language support, what I've uh, planned to do, um, so, yes, here. Um, so we don't see the VM here uh, on the home page. Yes. So we have a number of uh, Windows Ultimate versions. Uh, what's really nice about the Windows Ultimate, so we have the Windows 7 one and the Windows Vista. What's really nice about Windows Ultimate is you get all the languages. So the Windows 7 one is set up with all 35 uh, supported languages. The Prime is right now in the test bot. Um, I have a snapshot of Windows 7 and so it's set up for one language. I cannot, so people can only test on in that configuration. One of the things I want to do is to have multiple snapshots per VM 
so that uh, ultimately you will be able to test in uh, Japanese, in Arabic, in, you just pick the right snapshot and write your test and test that configuration. It's also a bit... Um, yeah. uh, the, those VMs are sometimes a bit turning to set up. <coughs> Like the Windows Vista, I don't have all the languages installed because when I install more than a couple of languages, then Windows update breaks and <laughs> I cannot install the rest. <laughs> but I'll figure it out at some point when I have time. <laughs> and for, for Linux, so I don't know. We, I'm, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. Uh, it's going to introduce performance problems, but I guess I'll just ignore it for now and when we have something, we'll scramble to figure out how to improve performance if that's fit to well. One thing I may do is uh, now that I have this, um, this script that I run on my laptops, which automatically reboot Windows, uh, I need a, a Linux partition to do it anyway, and maybe I'll maybe it will go with uh, adding real hardware to to the white test spot. Uh, the idea would be to have the, this uh, real hardware machine with uh, Linux, and uh, make it so the white test spot can submit jobs and run the test on Linux, or tell the machine to reboot to Windows and then send the job to run on Windows. How do you make sure that the disk image doesn't change? Uh, the idea is I, that what I do on my laptops is I have uh, I use NTFS clone to make a, uh, to take an image of the Windows partition. So it's, it only saves the part of the partition which is used. So it's on the Linux side, compressed. And before rebooting, I restore the, the disk image. Um, so it. Starts to compile, restores the disk image in parallel, waits for all that stuff to be done, and then runs the test on Linux, and then sets up grub to reboot Windows, reboots. <coughs> on Windows, I have a bash file which downloads one test, runs one test, and shuts down the laptop. So I can probably do something like that and, and, and integrate it in the Windows box. It's just going to take a bit of time to, to adjust. Sure, there's really any wine developer who 
works in summary. So, well, it does a uh, English who works on free, making sure that one works on so free BSD from time to time. But I don't think that anyone really wants to take the trouble of fixing the test on the so far. So the most urgent part is getting the test to work on Windows. Because if the goal of those tests is to document how the Windows APIs work. So we call uh, the API and check the results. And then we check that wine returns the right results. But if that, if that test fails on Windows, it means it's testing the wrong thing. So if you make wine uh, pass the test, you're breaking one. So you have to make sure that it really works on Windows first. So, and right now it's really not the case. So we really have to to get this part fixed, and, and then, then obviously we have to move to the to the other platforms. How much of that is still QMU issues? Okay. I know I know of one QMU issue. Okay. One. <laughs> There's one now. Okay. All right. So it really is just we're being lazy. It's really yeah. Um, Virtual machines that cause some trouble for all the direct 3D and the OpenGL stuff. Uh, and they also cause some trouble with sound sometimes because of um, timing issues. But even for direct 3D, I mean, a test that cannot work on, uh, on in a virtual machine like uh, direct 3D because there's no 3D acceleration, so most of the tests are mini tests. The thing is, if the test should be skipping. The test should be skipped, right. not not failing. So even if even directly tests on virtual machines, if they fail, it's bad. It has to be fixed. Theory does it. We have hardware dedicated to running. So, so we have hardware yeah. sitting in a rack, cold. That is available to run these on real hardware. So if we, if you want, if we can inject that. That's available. I mean, you only get to pick one Windows. Version, but it seems like it would be useful to have that. We, I think we talk about every time about that every year. No, it's still sitting there. We bought it two years ago. So. Yeah, I've been requesting this ever since Game produced the first testable version, and it never happened. Well, I think it's all available for you to work on. And I suspect Francois would be really happy to help you get it going. Yeah, I have a bunch of machines at home with myself that I only use for testing and well it, it would be helpful for me if I could uh, touch my machines because the Windows is much easier to maintain when you have physical access. But uh, I guess it's a bit more tricky because they're going to be offline every now and then when I'm not at home and so on. And the power consumption would be an issue as well. In the past, <coughs> besides lack of time, in the past one of the blockers to adding real hardware to the one test board is that I did not know how to handle the, the rebooting and restoring the image and stuff like that. Now that I have it working on my laptops, I can... <coughs> it's not going to be easy to integrate into the test board, but... Um, it's one less problem. Mm -hmm. Suggestion for how to get the Windows test fixed. I have one thing that works wonderfully for regressions, that is code freeze. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and it would be a good idea to get out of the code freeze only the when we reach like I don't know four or three percent of failing Windows tests. We have now seven and a half percent. Well, the number is zero. <laughs> no, that's not three percent. No, zero wouldn't be possible. Really. No, zero is possible. Zero is possible if it's in your mind. And otherwise, it's zero. Yeah, but then to, to do one comes later when we will have zero and the control freeze will end. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's actually one of the big bonuses of our stable releases. It's like, I think the big bonus of the stable release is the code freeze as opposed to necessarily the release itself. No, it doesn't require a stable yeah. That will definitely force us to work on them. We yeah. once had zero test pages on the test. But the best thing would be if the test is reliable and Alexander stops accepting your patches. Yeah. 
Well, we need to we need to get out of the ambiguity between the old test plot and the new test plot. So we need to fix that. So there's only one test plot, and then we need to drive that to green. That's I think that's what we need. I mean, two test plots is not to an issue. As long as they're all green. But I think people, I think people, I think people see it as being up in the air, and so they think, well, it's not really resolved, so I'm not going to work on it. No, the one problem is we don't have as many VMs on the new test plot. That's the one that's running my patches now. So we miss failures. And the other issue is just that we still have failing tests so that we cannot reject the patches because the test is failing because it was already failing so before the patch. But we just need people to take ownership of the problems and fix them. And also, we don't have many test results on the back. Uh, there's uh, only two test results, one for the Mac driver and one for the XL1 driver. And so that's also the machine I run at home. And I have a script, the scripts I talked about, uh, they also drive the test on the Mac. So if there are more volunteers, then we to test on non-Intel uh, graphics cards, <laughs> so <laughs> that would be nice. Well, maybe we should go and wrap up any other You have a question? One last question. Um, I think I've seen on the test results that um, they didn't break because of some new one patches that were wrong, but maybe something with the machines, with the original machines had. If you have a look at the results page between uh, uh, when Windows 7 uh, recently turned from yellow to, uh, to red. And if you have a look at the red ones, then you see there were no patches in line. Uh, yeah, that, that's because it's running test against the wine server and we upgraded Debian and wine server. So the okay. difference is... Still broken tests, they're just broken in a different way. <laughs> they were broken by the Debian upgrade on the server. Okay, I see. So that's harder to fix, I guess. No, you just need to adapt the test. Well, they're just making it work. It's just a time out and an HTTP request or something. Yeah, there are a few different things, but yeah, basically, slightly different HTTP response or something like that. But the thing is, people should be looking at that and seeing that there's a problem in one of your tests, then you should be fixing it. It wasn't. <laughs> I mean, not you personally, but everybody here. Yeah, we need a way to force us to do that. Well, if Santa could stop sending patches until you don't fix your tests, so. Yeah, but I mean, we don't I have our tests. Sort of they do are that. so that they're failing. <laughs> Maybe you should re reject patches on tests that are failures, even if the failures predate the patch. <laughs> I sometimes do that too. Okay, if we don't accept patches for the DLL, for example, when it has something failing, then for some DLLs that essentially means that we stop accepting patches. Like, I don't know frankly anything about certificates and some really nerds fail with failures are about that. I will never be able to fix that. Yeah, that means yeah. I won't be able to send anything there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why it's a judgment call. Cannot be, cannot be a blanket policy. And that's why it's necessary for the original uh, test author to, to get involved and fix their test. Because for our people, it can be pretty hard. <coughs> but the other thing we will do in the hacking session is go through the list and name names. <laughs> <laughs> make people fix the test. And we can make it the greener if we kick out the ideal, right? So it will be one or right there. Right. <laughs> we can also make it green, which is replacing the red color in the age. Yeah, one patch fixes it all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, why don't we go ahead and wrap up? Thanks for us,